first to carry here for CPD On Demand. Today I'm with Giles Maynard, who's General Manager of Projects in Engineering for Elfirm and the leaders in heat tracing innovation. So welcome Giles. Thank you very much, Alistair. Um, it's a subject which is a complex one, but as we understand from our industry, it's close to the bitumen sector, but um, does it have broader applications? It most certainly does, and uh, it's uh, uh, quite right. The oil and gas industry is a, um, a major industry that is focused on when it comes to electrical heat tracing. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there are a number of other industries that um, we cater to. Um, the food and, food and beverage industry is one that we, we, we look at. Pharmaceutical industry is one we look at. Uh, the automotive industry is one we look at. Uh, water treatment, um, plumbing. It goes on and on right. and on. That's quite a broad spectrum, yes. Brilliant. So it seems um, obvious to you, but to the people viewing this video, um, they'll want to know uh, perhaps more about heat tracing. What is it in a nutshell? Electrical heat tracing is a, is, is a technology that has been around for, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, there are four different types of electrical heat tracing, which we'll get into a little more later on in the video. But um, it is essentially a technology that is used to maintain or in some instances raise the temperature on pipes, valves, tanks um, and pumps. Okay. Um, it is, it's, it's, it's comes in a, a cable sort of format and I have a piece of e electrical self-regulating heat tracing over here. And this is strapped to the whatever medium, whatever um, item is being heated, whether it's a, a, a valve or a pipe, okay. and um, you're then putting electrical current onto this cable, and through that you are then maintaining or heating up the temperature okay. of whatever medium is flowing through that right. pipe or vessel. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the history, I mean, it's, is it a fairly recent innovation? It's a technology that has, over the years, got increasingly more technologically advanced mm -hmm. and we have seen some fantastic developments. Mm -hmm. However, the technology has been around since the 1930s. Okay. It started off in 1931, I think, with um, a mineral insulated heating mm -hmm. cable, which uh, has a, cop a copper conductor surrounded mm -hmm. by what they call a magnesium oxide um, insulation layer, okay. um, and that's encapsulated in a um, uh, metal jacket mm -hmm. and that um, they're essentially putting an electrical current on that and that mm -hmm. was just getting hot. Okay. Um, it's very similar to an, what they call an inkaloy element. If you imagine a um, at the bottom of your kettle mm -hmm. or at the bottom of your oven, yes. those are inkaloy elements right. and they have similar properties but okay. uh, different in, in a lot of respects as well. And that was started in 1930 and then we they used that in industry for a number of years and arrived in 1971, um, the market uh, saw what they called first self-regulating cable, which is the cable that I've just held up now. Um, and that was also fairly rudimentary at the time. And mm -hmm. since then, um, we've added to that what they call a series resistance cable mm -hmm. and a constant wattage cable. So the four are your, magnesium, your mineral insulated, your self-regulating cable, your constant wattage cable, and your serial resistance wire. As a, as a broad starting point, essentially. Yes. It's a pretty complex field. So, internationally, I mean, what are the norms and standards? The norms and standards are something that are constantly being developed and worked on. Mm -hmm. um, the, the code which is most commonly used is an IEC code, and that's a 60079-30. Okay. Um, and that essentially um, determines the E, um, how electrical heat trading is installed in mm. EX areas. All right. um, being explosive Explo areas. EX okay. being explosion areas, okay. yes. Um, and then it's just the general um, uh, other IEC codes. There's a 60216, which is another general um, electrical cable, but there are very few standards and norms mm. specifically related to electrical heat tracing. And it's something that we would like to um, develop okay. going into the future. And why is that if it goes back to 1931? It's quite an interesting statement, don't you think? Or is it such a specialised area? 
Um, I suppose in, it is a specialized area and 1930 was, it was a method of heating mm -hmm. and since then the requirements for heating in industry have become more and more complex and, mm -hmm. and the mediums being heated are more and more sus susceptible to the different fluctuations okay. in temperature okay. and therefore the need has arisen for a development in the heat tracing that has right. come around. Yes. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to um, the technology, I mean, its main purpose implies heating, but at the same time, there's a cost involved. Yes. Um, is there a saving as well? Yes, uh, the, saving, the saving is around the traditional heating technologies mm -hmm. that are currently in the market versus mm -hmm. you will always have a cost associated with heating. Um, whether the cost is related to electricity, or whether the cost is related to steam, or whether the cost is related to gas, okay. um, there is a cost involved in heating. Mm. The saving come with electrical heat tracing mm. is your the electrical cost and the amount of energy, the amount of energy required to heat is mm. greatly reduced, okay. um, and as a result, the saving comes in your your energy bill, whatever that might be. Yes, um, there is a there is important to differentiate between steam tracing and electrical heat tracing, yes. um, and it is important to make to make note of the fact that in some processes, mm. especially for instance on the likes of the sasol, mm. where a byproduct from the engine, the process is steam, mm. essentially it is free steam if you okay. want to say that right. and then there is definitely a case to be made for mm. steam tracing right however in this day and age with the the specific temperature points that mm. you're looking to get on your different processes mm. and on your different products mm. you get a much more accurate control with an electrical heat tracing system than you do with a okay. steam tracing right. system okay so now we're really drilling down into the details i mean this is quite an interesting question for people. I mean, heat, heating cables, you know, heated hoses, heating mats and jackets. I mean, what are their specific applications in, t in the context of what we've been discussing? So that's a, that's a great question. I could probably mm. spend an hour on mm. explaining all of the different applications yes. in industry. Um, but to give you a broad, broad spectrum, yes, mm. we do electrically heated hoses, mm -hmm. we do electrically heated mats, right. we do electrically heated um, uh, blankets, and obviously traditional heat tracing as right. I said. The, 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 the drum, we call them drum heaters, are some, mm. something that goes around a mm. vessel of some description. Mm. And it's normally a standalone item rather than part of the process flow. Okay. And those are used in isolation, mm. and you can plug them in, plug them out, move them around. Okay. They're great for um, your 220 liter um, drums, whether they've got grease in them or okay. honey or right. whatever it might okay. be. Um, the heated hoses are something mm. that are uh, in the automotive industry, for instance, would be a good example where they have um, adhesives. Mm. A lot of car cars nowadays mm. are stuck together with glue, believe it or not. Scary. And um, mm. these um, adhesives are temperature sensitive, and okay. so it has to be kept at a certain temperature right, right up to the point where it's applied. Okay. And so that's another application. Going back to our bitumen industry, mm. uh, unloading and offloading of mm. bitumen from tanker mm. to tank yes. is um, a, an essential part of mm. keeping the product warm at all okay. times. And that would be for your hoses. Right. Um, mats, I mean, we've had mats being used in all sorts of applications, mm -hmm. um, placed on the outside of um, uh, oddly shaped hoppers. Okay. Um, and then your heat tracing kind of fills in everything else. Mm. Um, your piping, your pumps, your valves. Um, we do make custom, make, custom made jackets okay. specifically to fit around jackets, uh, right. pumps and valves as well. Okay. So there are a number of applications mm. in, num in, in those different industries. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I suppose that answers the yes. question. Yes, it does, because it suggests that either it's for a new project installation, but it can also be for retrofitting. Quite right. Mm. Um, one of, one of, we've, we've a number of different mm. applications now mm. are 
moving away from the traditional mm. steam tracing mm. and um, gas mm. and are moving more towards the um, e electrical heat tracing system. The, okay. the OPEX cost associated mm. with the traditional technolog mm. technologies versus electrical heat tracing mm. is far greater okay. than your, uh, your OPEX cost on your um, electrical heat tracing oh, system. Yes. CAPEX um, costs are similar. Okay, excellent. Um, you've, men you've mentioned ex explosive areas. I mean, clearly this is a mission critical application. Um, in hazardous areas, what are the um, dynamics um, and things, the takeaways that viewers need to understand? So, I suppose to, to give you a bit of background to mm. that question and then lead into the, the, the EX areas, the explosion yes. areas, um, mm. you need, we need to understand that um, first and foremost, the mm. most important thing is to get the right design. Right. Um, okay. So we have, to, sp we have mm. to focus on the engineering first. Right. Once you have a, mm. a design done by mm. a qualified heat tracing technician, mm -hmm. um, you are then in a position to determine what cables you require mm. for mm. those areas. Most of our heat tracing cables are available to be used in e e EX, EX areas. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's um, you have to make them um, safe. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to kind of any sparking, mm -hmm. etc., etc., etc. Right. And the accessories are mm -hmm. one of the other questions as well. If the cables e mm -hmm. um, EX area, what about all the accessories? Mm -hmm. And we at Eltham make sure that the accessories okay. are also EX All right. rated and approved and certified. All right. And I'm sure in the most industrial areas, um, there is an explosive um, factor that needs to be factored in. It does. It depends mm. on, this, on, the, on the industries. For mm. instance, in, um, in the power generation mm. industry sometimes, more often than not in the oil and gas, mm. there's definitely yes. um, hazardous areas right. that have to be considered. And um, we, we, we cater for these for the, for the industry with okay. the products that we supply. So you've installed the cables, right? But what about monitoring and control systems? That's a fantastic, mm. um, really, really mm. good. We we get two types of customers mm. um, in South Africa. Okay. Um, the Burmaka plan. Yes, <laughs> which sounds a bit hairy. <laughs> which, is, which, um, which you have to cater for. Yes. And then what I would say, the right way of doing it. Right. Um, and when it comes to control and monitoring, it's, mm. it's the right way of doing it. Of course. Um, out of the four different cables that you have, mm. three of those have to be controlled mm. using an RTD, which is a, a, mm. a resistive thermal device, okay. like a PT100 or a, mm. um, a thermocouple. Okay. Those have to then be linked to a mm. monitoring device, mm -hmm. which is either switching on or switching off the cable. Okay. Um, it is important to understand, for instance, the self-limiting or self-regulating cable mm. is, is one where literally it can be cut off a roll, mm -hmm. it can be applied to a pipe, mm. power can be put on it, mm. and you can leave it alone. It's mm. an incredible technology. Okay. Um, but it is the only one in mm. our family of okay. um, products. The mm. others all have to be controlled mm. and when it comes to control it is done as I said with an RTD mm. linked to some sort of controller mm -hmm. it can be uh, DIN mounted on in a, in a control panel okay. or field mounted in a little separate controller right. that's on the pipe okay. um, and then that can then be linked back to your SCADA mm. system mm. or whatever needs to okay. be. So, so you have got real-time information. Real-time data. Mm. We've got a, fan uh, a fantastic technology for your bigger installations mm. um, and we'll come to talking about mm. the concentrated solar power fields yes. now where we design the whole um, communication system either through mm. normally through Ethernet mm -hmm. but obviously you get Profbus and Modibus mm. and all those things yes. which, you cater, which you cater for um, but it's uh, the technology that we have is called mm. Trace Vision mm -hmm. it's a software that allows you to get that real 
time feedback from okay. the fuel. Um, what's happening to your sensor? Is it failing? Mm, yes or no. Mm, what's happening to the temperature of the pipe? Mm, is it what it needs to be at? Right. What's happening to the temperature of the cable? Is mm, it happening? Yes or no. Is it pulling the correct wattage? The correct have you got the correct okay. watt amps, etc., etc., etc. So a really complex subject because. Clearly, you've got to factor in ambient temperature at, at times, I would think. Correct. Well, mm. at the end of the day, your ambient mm. temperature is one of your design mm. parameters. Okay. And mm. yes, it is critical during mm. the design calculations. Mm. However, once that is established, mm. the key parameters are more mm. around your process okay. and your, your cable temperatures. All right. So, clearly, when it comes to um, temperature controllers, um, there's a lot to be said on that subject. Yes, mm. um, I mean the temperature controllers as I've mentioned are, have to be used in mm. specific for specific applications mm. in specific areas. Right. Um, it's not a one controller fits mm. all. We have our day-to-day -day controller which mm. is literally field mounted mm. um, and as I said you get um, if you depending on what program and what language mm. is being spoken, mm. whether you want it control, uh, installed into a control panel or not, mm. all has an impact on which controller that we okay. use. And we've, we've, we've been around for mm. nearly 30 years mm. um, as a company, a global company, and so we have got a whole series of controllers that can be used for whatever application might arise. Okay. And what are the developments in that area? I mean, is Ofem doing a lot of R&D research into controllers and allied areas? We, we, obviously, we've got the Internet of Things, which yes. is, which is um, fast mm. approaching yes. us, and it's a fascinating subject, right. and one that Ofem is looking to embrace. Okay. Um, for instance, we are, one of the things that we, we do um, is we heat tankers mm. um, and these are you know the, the tankers that get put on ships and move all around the world okay. and often these mm. um, tankers have in them very very uh, temperature sensitive products okay and we are at a point now where we've developed a controller which allows you to sit in South Africa mm. and your container can be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean mm. and you're getting real-time feedback okay. via internet, uh, via satellite feed mm. um, anywhere in the world. Okay. We've also, the, the trace vision um, mm. that I mentioned earlier is able to, you are able to sit in your office in Johannesburg, mm. Mm. Your, there's a problem on site with one of the mm. heating circuits for whatever reason, mm. you're able to go and change the temperature settings mm. on your iPad okay. and make all those changes. Very so interesting. The technological advances that we're right. looking to do are, are right. fantastic and really we're trying to keep up with the times. Okay. And are there any sort of uh, risk management interventions that um, are required, for example, from a security installation um, protection and so on? Um, for example, where something might be deactivated accidentally? So, um, again, it's, uh, no, from a security mm. point of view, um, the client specifies exactly mm. what he wants mm -hmm. and there is definitely security settings okay. um, which can be in, uh, mm. uh, whatever the client specifies can, right. be, can be put in place. Okay. Um, I mean, Again, we're talking about um, software um, evolution. You mentioned Trace Vision. I mean, what is that and where is it going for end users? Um, it's a, it's, as you said, it's the end mm. user's interface between mm. the electrical heat tracing system yes. and the control room. So right. your control room is where you have a bank of computer screens mm -hmm. um, giving you real-time data feedback. Yes. And Trace Vision is the software that allows that okay. to happen on your electrical heat tracing system. Um, as I've mentioned, the the technology is not, you don't have to be sitting in the control room any mm. longer. You can be sitting in your office in your, okay. in your coffee shop in Cairo or wherever you want mm. to be in the world, and you can have real-time feedback right. um, on, that, on, right. that, on that system. And is the software also of benefit to consulting engineers who are involved in installation design? Um, it's it, it is specifically related mm. to uh, to Altherm and specifically related to the electrical heat tracing thing. Right. So um, the benefit is for 
the end user rather than for okay. consulting engineers. Fine. Do you offer something to the design industry externally? We, we have what we call a design package, which is freely right. available on our website. Okay. It allows consulting engineers mm -hmm. who have a basic understanding of thermodynamics mm -hmm. and um, heat loss and heat tracing right. properties to design basic heat heating systems okay. independently. All right. And um, that is freely available off the website. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's a, it's a software that we give out freely right. and readily available on, right. on request. Excellent. Okay, so we've been talking about a lot of technology. Um, let's talk about some of the projects and applications, for example, in the bitumen industry, in the cement industry, and in the solar energy market, where you've been extensively involved, I understand. Yes. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, we've one of the industries that uh, mm. has been um, a great industry for us in the last mm. couple of years has been the bitumen mm. industry. Mm. What we've found in the bitumen industry is that um, a lot of people have been using mm. the, ink, the traditional ink alloy elements, okay. which are long, long, yes. long kettle elements, yes. and plugging those into um. the into the mm. electrical supply, mm. and um, away they go. Mm. Um, that's in conjunction with what we call um, heating torches, mm -hmm. which are gas-powered heating torches, which okay. are literally moved up oh, and I down see. the pipe to, okay. to heat them. Both of those have what we call a high watt density, mm. meaning there's a lot of heat in a very mm. small area. Mm. And what you do is you actually burn your product, okay. and it actually creates a skin on the inside of the pipe, mm. which means that you create, in, a, in essence, an insulating layer meaning that the product that needs to be heated is actually mm. being prevented from being heated by the mm. burnt product around okay. it. Okay. And so the, the, the answer to this is lowering your watt density, mm. which mm. is what electrical heat tracing does. Okay. It keeps it at a low watt density mm. and allows the product, which is already at temperature, mm. to flow easily through the piping, mm -hmm. easily through the valves, mm. easily through your pumps. Okay. And obviously when it's in a storage container or a tank, it's obviously important to keep that warm as well. All right. So the technology, the technology, the advance there is getting rid of um, technology that is not fit for purpose. Yes. And replacing it with technology that is fit for purpose. Right. That's in the bitumen industry. Yes. In the cement industry, um, we've um, and also in, in they, it's very closely linked to the mm. power generation mm. industry where they have fly ash coming mm. off the top mm. of your boilers. Mm. And they have some, not all power stations, but mm. coal-fired power stations have bag houses. Mm. And those bag houses um, uh, catch the ash. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking to do is prevent two things, is preventing mm. blockages. If there's mm. any moisture mm. that gets into your, uh, your cement uh, silo or mm. your hopper, mm. it creates bridging and doesn't allow your ash or your cement to flow freely. Mm. So we heat the hot, we, we heat trace the outside of the hoppers. Okay. The other the other reason for heat tracing your hoppers on in the uh, power generation in uh, bag houses in mm. the power stations, the coal fired power mm. stations, is as soon as there's a water presence, a moisture presence, is mm. you're getting noxious um, chemicals for you. Mm your hydrogen sulfide and everything, which actually mm. eats away at the lining of the okay. hopper itself. So by heating that, you're preventing moisture, which mm. prevents the mm. acids from forming. Mm. Um, so that would be our, some of the reasons and uses and applications in those two industries. Moving on to uh, a newer area for mm. us, which is the renewable mm. energy mm. um, is the concentrated solar power mm. industry. Mm. And that's really very been very interesting. Right. Um, the technology is making use of parabolically shaped mirrors, okay. um, which heat um, a fluid, a uh, high temperature fluid, which gets passed through a heat exchanger. Mm. Um, the heat exchanger has, has two stages. During the day, it's heating water. Mm -hmm. uh, which is in turn generating steam and turning a turbine. Mm -hmm. At night and the other half of the, um, the heat exchanger during the day is um, turning the, um, the uh, HTF, the high temperature fluid mm. from the field, mm. is heating salt. 
Okay. And now it's not mm. your table salt. It's yes. Okay. It's obviously um, something a little different. All right. Um, but it's a salt, um, and um, that the reason it's salt is mm. that, that specific um, mm. product has really good heat retention properties. Mm. Okay. And so that is then putting into a silo, mm. and then when the sun goes down, mm. the, so the heat, the salt from mm. that silo is being passed through the heat exchanger to heat the water okay. now, so right. at night. So theoretically, mm. you can generate mm. electricity from the sun mm. 24 hours a day. Amazing. Now, the heat tracing component mm. comes in mm. on the salt lines mm -hmm. and some of the HTF lines. Okay. And we are having to maintain temperatures there of around 275, 300, 400 mm. degrees centigrade, mm. um, which is a fantastic challenge for mm. us and something we, we've mm. been able to do very successfully. Mm. Um, and it's, it's been a, a really big growth area for us mm. over the last few years. Um, okay. with the current economic state of, of course of, and the political of climate course. and uh, we're not too sure mm. whether or not this will continue in South Africa mm. but certainly in the rest of the world mm. which is where we, we have got projects in Morocco, in Israel, mm. in mm. Uh, Chile mm. um, so it's uh, an exciting opportunity right. for us. Yeah. And was this a first time application for Eltham in solar for South Africa and a new innovation in South Africa um, mm. we've had we've, we've done one project in the Northern Cape mm. um, we've got two others currently in the Northern Cape which okay. we're working on um, internationally our very very first project was actually mm. in Morocco all right um, and um, we've got as I said we've got projects now in Israel and in Chile as okay. well so um, mm. a lot of exciting opportunities right. there for us so how broadly um, are are your operations worldwide? We have we have op we have um, uh, offices in uh, Canada, mm -hmm. in uh, in Shanghai, mm -hmm. um, uh, in Singapore, in Spain, mm -hmm. in Italy, in the United Kingdom, All right. in Italy, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Our head office is obviously in Germany. Okay. And then for Africa operations right. in South Africa. All right. So no, it's just interesting because. Um, I was reading recently about that floating solar farm in China. Um, just a different technology. I was just wondering about the heating implications for that, <laughs> that I, one. I, I haven't, haven't read that article. Okay. But, um, I met that's, take, trust the Chinese to come up with Yes, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, so when it comes to um, pumps, I mean, pumps in all sorts of industries, what about pumps in the water and wastewater treatment side. Is that relevant for your type of technology? So in the water treatment industry, mm. um, a lot of water treatment uses what they call mm. caustic soda. Okay. And caustic soda mm. is generally it's a cleaning agent. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a water treatment agent okay. to get pH levels and everything correct. And caustic soda is notorious mm. for getting stuck if it gets to okay. wrong temperatures. All right. So it's not so much the pumps and the water, it's actually the chemicals that are being oh, used see. in that process. Okay. Yeah. So what sort of temperatures are required and what sort of technologies are being applied? So the, again, depending on the applications, mm. um, the technologies that we're using in that is predominantly self-regulating mm -hmm. cable at temperatures between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, it's critical to keep it at that sort of temperature. Right. Um, and these can change. Um, uh, but that's traditionally what we use as a self-regulating cable in that environment. When it comes to complex mm. geometries on pumps, okay. we sometimes make use of this white cable over here, which yes. is a, a serial, it's a serial cable, All right. and it has a lot more three-dimensional okay. flexibility than, say, your traditional right. self-regulating cable. All right. So, um, yes, that's what All we right. do in the water industry. And what are we looking at with the blue and the brown cable? So here? just just to have a look, I mean, mm. on camera, I'm not too sure if you really identify them. They look exactly the same. Okay. But um, this this is an interesting cable in that it can be put into water. Oh, it's okay. It's an electrical cable that can be run right. in a water pipe. Okay. Um, uh, which is a nice, interesting technology. And then this one is called a constant wattage cable. Mm. Um, the constant wattage cable gives you a constant watt okay meter. so it's self-explanatory um, and um, it's it can it, it can go up to some fairly high temperatures mm. um, sort of 250 degrees centigrade mm. 
heat tracing has the ability, mm. and it's incredible, across the mm. four different varieties. Mm. Your temperature ranges from anything from negative 60 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. which is freezing, and mm. you would be looking at Russia, and yes. Canada, and the Antarctic, and Arctic, mm. to those sort of applications, which we've done. Right. Um, and right up to nearly a thousand degrees Celsius mm. um, with heat tracing. So mm. it's, it's quite interesting to see the different applications and different um, uh, abilities of, of mm. a technology like this. Yes. Okay, so Giles, what do we have here as an example of um, the type of heat tracing technologies available? Alistair, what we have here is a typical installation on, of self-regulating cable. Okay. Um, self-regulating cable is by far the most commonly used electrical mm -hmm. heat tracing in South Africa. Right. And uh, so I'll just run you through a little bit about what's what and, and all the rest of it. Sure. This big wacky looking thing here is what they call a junction box. Okay. And it's essentially you have your power source arriving over here. All right. You'll have um, some dim rail mounted blocks and you'll have um, uh, the it is where the electrical heat tracing cable meets the power. Um, we have this is a, a, a design that um, we've used um, in, in Eltham. Mm -hmm. It allows for your cables to come in to the core of the, um, uh, the body of the um, junction box and thereby because what happens after this is there has to be a layer of insulation okay. and there has to be a layer of cladding that goes on top of this. All right. And as a result, when that happens, you don't want to damage these cables. Mm. So this, this, uh, this leg over here protects the cables okay. from being damaged from your right. cladding and your insulation. Okay. It's literally fixed to the pipe using a screw-mounted clamp, All right. um, so nothing too fancy there. Okay. As you can see, what we then do is we heat trace, you place the cable on the, on the pipe. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, this is just for demonstration purposes, mm. but traditionally what you'll do is you'll place your cable on the underside of the, okay. of the pipe All right. as heat rises. Okay. So as a, that's, that's what this is, and these black both black cables over here are two different types of a self-regulating heating cable. At the end over here, um, mm. we have what they call the end boot, which is mm -hmm. the termination to make sure that it's um, sealed and mm -hmm. there's no water ingress. Okay. Um, and then over um, over here, we have um, a nameplate, which is just identifying the circuit, the amps, the voltage. Um, it, if it has a specific numbers, numbering that the client requires, it's an identification tag in essence. Great. And Giles, what can you tell me about this um, particular yellow cable here? So what we have over here is um, an example of um, the number plate that we mentioned previously and an example of an um, EX, an explosion proof area RTD sensor, which is okay. a a thermal device used to transmit the temperature back to whatever it's being uh, to a, a transmitter and that's being recorded by your client um, on whatever platform he has chosen. The RTD sensor um, uh, is mounted on the pipe or it can also be mounted next to the cable if you're looking mm -hmm. to get whatever mm -hmm. temperature you're looking to get. So it's an important part of um, when you're talking about your serial cable, your constant wattage cable and your mineral insulated cable will have to have some form of RTD. It's interesting that you mentioned earlier some of the examples um, where people are using more manual systems, systems that can't be monitored effectively, for example manually heating a section of, of pipe. And if that's still common practice, um, why do you think that is the case um, when this type of technology has been advancing very progressively? It's, the answer is quite simple, is, mm. is, is educating the market. All right. Um, if there's a, as a, a silly joke, but it, mm. it emphasizes the point mm. that in Canada, mm. a child is not born with a rattle in his hand, he's born with mm. a piece of heat tracing because okay. they use it everywhere. All it's right. used in, in, on your driveway to melt oh, the see. snow, in okay. the gutters to melt the okay. gutters. In South Africa, mm. the technology is relatively unknown, mm. and our big drive and our big challenge mm. is to educate the market. What mm. can it do? What mm. are its limitations? What are its applications? Yes. Often we find people who've come across the technology, and they're saying it's rubbish. 
mm. and we're saying why mm. and they're saying well i used this and mm. it didn't work okay the problem being is that you've mm. used the wrong app the wrong product mm. in the wrong application yes it's never going to work right you need to speak to guys who know a little bit about mm. it it's the, the principle is quite simple mm. however the you need a little bit of expertise yes. and um, knowledge. Yes. Ultimately, at the end of the day, so one of our one of our offerings to the industry is free training on electrical mm. heat tracing mm. to anyone that wants mm. it. And, right. Uh, and who are you targeting? Which professional groups are responsible so, for these tasks? So I mean, we obviously one of the mm. I think. A lot of um, a lot of industry relies, specifically in South Africa, relies mm. on your what we call the EPCs, your engineering, procurement, construction, mm. your your Group Fives, yes. your William Parsons, and yes. the sector. Those sorts right. of those sorts of companies mm. um, are ultimately the ones responsible for specifying upfront mm. mm. what sort of heating system is going mm. to be applied on a particular plant. Right, and it's it's trying to engage with those. Mm industries and those mm. um, players in the market to get them fully aware of the technology mm. and using it so it can benefit not only um, help them but the market as, as, as well because there are huge benefits. Exactly and to clearly understand that it's not for cold um, territories only clearly you're there to protect a product yeah. and that's vitally important. Yeah. Okay Charles so with all this detail, all this preparation, eventually it has to come to main maintenance. I mean, what is a typical lifespan on these um, systems that you install and what are the things that people have to look out for? Uh, the lifespan on, on our games mm. typically ranges anything mm. from 15 to 20 years mm. and on, we've had some cases we have to 25 years. Okay. So these, these are designed for long-term use. Right. Um, you install them once and um, you, you, know, you leave them alone and they mm -hmm. do their thing. Okay. Um, in the South African market, it's always mm. challenging with, mm. um, with people trying to change things. Yes. Some, uh, sometimes things get damaged and they do need to be replaced. Right. But um, if, you, if it's installed correctly, installed mm. with the right monitoring and censoring equipment, mm. it lasts for many, many, many years. Mm. Um, the the this makes a nice it's a, in stark contrast in mm. fact to the traditional your steam tracing and your mm. your gas um, mm. things which requires heavy maintenance. Okay. You need uh, steam traps on your lines mm. every five or ten meters. Right. Um, and those need to be checked and working mm. and those are a nightmare mm. gas is obviously mm. um, nozzles need to be changed. Okay. Um, the actual you know whatever the container is, sometimes mm. gets wear and tear on it. So okay. it's um, from a maintenance point of view, it really, really is a okay. fantastic product. Mm. And internationally, I mean, you're obviously not the sole player in the market, you're one of the leaders in the market, but how, how extensive is the industry? Do you have a professional association that represents the there, sector? No, the by far the biggest um, uh, market is mm. the northern North America. Okay. Um, and um, the major players in mm. in those uh, are based in, in those right. industries. Okay. Um, in in the world there are um, four or five main major players. Okay. Of which Eltham is definitely one All of right. those top five. Uh, excellent. Um, yeah. Okay. So, food for thought. Um, and then my next question would be, for those who ignore heat tracing, what are the implications? They seem fairly obvious, but maybe there's some that, that aren't. Yeah, I suppose that ignore it at your, at your peril. Yes. <laughs> mm. um, not only is there a massive uh, cost savings that can mm. be had, yes. there's quality improvements that can be made right. in your product lines. Okay. Um, and I'll take your um, bitumen as, in, mm. as a great example. Mm. Um, your inkaloy elements and your mm. flame torches mm. that are mm. being used mm. um, can degradate, can mm. degrade the, the product to such an extent that it starts carbonizing. Okay. And then the quality of your product to your customers mm. is being compromised. Mm. And I, it's something that, you know, if you're the manager of the business, mm. you would say, well, if I can improve my quality, why don't I? Exactly. And so, you know, 
child to electrical injuries. Yes. So essentially then, in any industry, you're, you're minimizing your wastage uh, risk factor. Correct. Okay. Not only are you saving mm. costs, but you're improving the quality right. of your products as well. And essentially this is a clean energy. It is a clean energy. Mm. I mean, it, well, it, I mean, if you take it back, yes, it is a clean energy. Mm. There's no, when, it, when it's functioning, it's a clean mm. energy. Mm. How your power is generated mm. is, is, is obviously the yes, argument that some of smart guys at the mm. end of this video are going to mm. say, well, electricity is generated by coal, mm. but yes, it's also generated by solar and wind solar and, and wind so on. Everything. So yes, mm. it is based on electricity, but it is a clean energy. Okay, excellent. So fantastic discussion. What about the future of heat tracing? Where are we going to go? You mentioned the Internet of Things. Um, that's a factor that you could touch on, a bit. and what else can we um, expect? So yes, the factor of the Internet of Things is already impacting the way mm. in which we, we supply our products. People are wanting information um, mm. instantaneously mm. from wherever they are in the world. Right. We're providing, we meet yes. the demand. Um, the future of electrical heat tracing is getting to a point now where new products are being developed for the applications that, 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 are, that we find ourselves in. Um, really long, long runs of, of, of cable, really mm. long pipelines that have to okay. be designed and everything. We need to come up with innovative ways to cater to these, to get to these. There are technologies already available, mm. however, mm. It's, it's finding other technologies that are available. And, mm. you know, the future is the future, so we don't yet know what it is. Of holds. course, of course. Uh, and so changing with the market is one of our major, major focuses, is keeping up and coming up with new and innovative ways of, of providing clients with what they need. Brilliant, Giles. Thanks so much for this discussion. Thank you. Um, this is Alistair Curry for CPD On Demand.